Suppose you and your friend are going to a concert. When you get there, you're the only ones there. A friend looks on you and said, If the concert was today, then there would be hundreds of people here. So it can't be today. Oh! The date on the ticket is for tomorrow. So the concert is not today. You and your friend arrive at the same conclusion, but you get it from different ways, hence using direct and indirect proof method. There are several types of formal proof. However, the most basic type is a direct proof. Direct proof are used when proving conditional statements which statements are in the structure of if, then. Statements of if P, then Q. If this happens, then this happens. So in the direct proof, you assume that P is true and then prove that then Q must also be true. For example, if Ed's is 17, then Ed's is a K-pop fan. I would go about proving this statement by using direct proof by first saying Ed's like 17, which is true. And the second statement, S is a cape of fun, which is also true. Looking at the truth table, we could ignore the last two columns because we know that when we start with a false statement, then the statement would be S doesn't like 17. When we know that she does, any conclusion that we come to won't actually pertain to our original statement. Then, in the truth table, if we start with the true P and ends with the true Q, then the statement is logically sound. Whereas, if we start with a true P and ends with a false Q, like for instance, Ed's like 17 but she is not a K-pop fan, which is impossible because 17 is K-pop. So, we arrive with a illogical statement. Let's start with the conditional statement. If X is odd, then X squared is odd. Whereas, an odd number is defined as any number that can be represented by 2k plus 1, where k is an integer. For example, 5, which is an odd number, equals 2 times 2, which is an integer. We are then going to prove this by starting with a true p. We can say that, suppose x is odd, then we know that x is equal to 2k plus 1 for some integers k by definition of an odd number. From this, we must know that it follows that x squared is equal to 2k plus 1 squared, which is equal to 4k squared plus 4k plus 1. Since 4k squared and 4k can still be factored out by 2, then we can say that x squared is equal to 2 times 2k squared plus 2k plus 1. With this, we can say that x squared is actually equal to 2j plus 1 because all of this can just be represented as j, which is also an integer. Thus, 2k squared plus 2k is going to equal an integer. Therefore, x squared must be odd by definition of an odd number. Then we see that we prove this conditional statement directly because we assume that the first part is true, then we use mathematical logic to show that the second part was also true. Then we talk about using direct proof to prove some conditional statement, but we could also use what's known as indirect proof to prove some statement. And with all times, this is easier. An indirect proof is defined as proving if not Q, then not P, and this is logically equivalent to direct proof method. So if you take an example, if adds like 17, then adds to keep up fed. Using an indirect proof method, we would provide this by providing that if adds is not a keep up fed, then adds doesn't like 17. These two statements are logically equivalent. So why does an indirect proof method work? Let's take a look at another truth table. If both P and Q in a conditional statement is true, then not P and not Q are both false because they are the opposite of the true statements. Then, P leading to Q is true, it will be the same as not Q leading to a not P, which is also logically true because a false statement would then also be a false statement. 
The point of the truth table is that it shows that the two columns have the same information. For the first column being the direct method, and the second column being the indirect method. Furthermore, the truth table shows that the both of them have the same logical result. Therefore, it means that they are both valid. If we have a conditional statement, if 7x plus 9 is even, then x is odd. We are assuming that x is an integer and we can prove this indirectly by assuming suppose x is not odd. x must be even so x is equals to 2k for some integer k. x is equals to 2k being a definition of an even number. The even number 4 is equals to 2 times 2 which is the integer. So then 7k plus 9 must be equivalent to 7 times 2k plus 9 and it is equals to 14k plus 9 and if we distribute the 7 and 14k plus 9 it is equals to 14k plus 8 plus 1 and we want to get that 1 out of there so that we can factor 2 out of 14k plus 8 and get 2 times 7k plus 4 plus 1 Thus, 7x plus 9 equals 2b plus 1 because b can be represented by the integer 7x plus 4. Therefore, 7x plus 9 is odd by the definition of odd number because an odd number is 2 times an integer plus 1. 7x plus 9 is not even. And so we started with x is not odd, which is not q. And we ended up with 7x plus 9 is not even which is the same as not p. And so amidst of all that, we have just proven that an if and then statement is using indirect method. And that's it for today's discussion. We hope you guys enjoyed and learned from this video. Don't forget to share to your friends and click the notification bell for more updates and upcoming videos. Again, we are Mathineo. Thanks for watching. Bye!